Hey, in this week's Fuji Photo Walk, I trade in my trusty X100V for the brand new Fuji X-E4, and things go terribly wrong, so let's get into it. Recently, our family spent a week in Destin, Florida, and while I got plenty of photos of the kids playing on the beach, and even early morning uh, walks that I would go along the beach to watch the sunrise, got plenty of photos for that, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more challenging for this Fuji photo walk. Not too far from Destin is a little town called Seaside, Florida. Uh, it is a very interesting little town. Uh, it's very small, it's very quaint. It reminds you of like the 50s. Um, so I thought that that might be a good place to go for this Fuji photo walk because there's a lot of beautiful um, architecture in terms of the houses go. And it just, the, the way that the city is laid out is really interesting. And shout out to Quincy for trusting me with his Fuji XE4 to take it down to Florida and test it out for the week and just see what I can capture. Now, if you've watched any of the previous Fuji photo walks, you know that it's done with my X100V, which just has a fixed 23 millimeter focal length. You can't change lenses or anything like that. So I wanted to give myself a bit of a challenge by shooting with my Fuji 50 mil lens right here on the X-E4. But unfortunately, because the buildings are so close together and the town is so, so tight together, I guess that's the word that I'm looking for here, uh, using the 50 millimeter lens just completely destroyed any chance that I had of uh, capturing what I went out uh, with intention to shoot. So after like two or three photos, I had to come up with a new game plan uh, right away to figure out what it was that I was gonna shoot. So my first thought was, if I can't capture like an entire house, what parts or what elements of that house can I capture that is still gonna give me the same uh, feeling of beach town community, um, you know, that I was going for. And what I come up with here was just to do super tight punch-ins of aspects that I thought uh, looked interesting of a house, right? I firmly believe that if you see something and, and you feel something, uh, dive deeper into that. Figure out what it is that uh, that you find interesting so that then you can highlight that uh, specific aspect to make your photo really pop. I wanted to find something that said beach without showing a picture of the beach. And for me, that was this sailboat in the window right here. Beach houses often have several different, you know, levels to it. They're very strange. It's a, it's a, it's a unique shape. And when I saw this um, sailboat sitting in the window, I thought, what says water more than a boat? I really liked the lines. I liked, again, the architecture of the house. And this was me trying to fit all of that into one photo. Uh, this wasn't the photo that, you know, I really wanted to go after in the first place. Again, this was one of the first photos that I, that I took after realizing um, my original plan of capturing entire houses was not going to work out. Uh, I used to watch a lot of, uh, you know, like Twilight Zone and, uh, you know, old shows on Nick at Night or, you know, whatever it was back in the day. And there would always be, you know, these old towns with like the bandstand in the park. Um, there was only like six shops, things like that. And when I went to take photos, I really wanted to focus on um, this dreamlike quality that the city has. I mean, it even has an, an, an obelisk here leading you out to the ocean. But when it comes to the edits, I really wanted to pick out something that was going to highlight that dreamlike feel to it. So for this photo right here, I really wanted to turn the shadows a little bit more pink. This right here is the straight out of camera. And as you can see, it's very um, meat and potatoes. Like, this is it, this is the photo. Uh, but once I think you add uh, the edit onto it, it really adds a layer of 
of um, something as unusual. You don't see these colors naturally in real life and therefore it stands out a bit and I think that that lends itself to seaside, right? This isn't a town that you see every day. It feels very dreamlike and again that's what I was going for here in the edit. So when it comes to editing all of my Fuji photo walk um, photos, what I do is uh, I have 52 free Lightroom presets from the Beginner Photography Podcast that I give away to everybody, which you can find at freephotographypresets.com. You sign up and then they are yours. But what I do is that they are, let's see, so we'll go here into the presets. This preset right here is actually called New October. So it's this one right here. So this is the original with the preset applied. Uh, then it looks like this and then obviously I just tweaked the colors of the blue a little bit more to make the obelisk uh, and then the the structures surrounding the sky stand out just a little bit more. Um, but what I love is how infinitely customizable each one of these presets are. So, you know, you can come in here and change this. Well, that is a very different feel right there. You got Orion. I like that. That is very bright. That is very strong. But again, it's this color palette right here of New October that really lent itself to the vision that I had for these photos and it's just a little bit off. So if you want to get started um, and speed up your editing workflow and just try new creative uh, edits, then feel free to download my 52 free Lightroom presets at freephotographypresets.com. All you need is just your name, your email, you sign up, they're yours. I even give you a video on how to install them and how to use them as well. One thing that I love about Seaside is just that how um, how much planning went into creating the city itself, and therefore uh, we see a lot of that come through in the architecture as well, where there's lots of clean, straight lines. A building doesn't have to be just you know four walls and a roof. It can be something interesting. It can be something that you want to look at, that you enjoy looking at. In the same sense, you know, that photography is the same way, where it doesn't have to just be a document of what you see in front of you, but it can be artistic. So one thing that I loved about Seaside is that wherever you looked, there was some sort of beautiful lines or intersections or uh, geometrical patterns or shapes uh, that you could see wherever you were. At this point, all that I had to do was just stand in one spot and then wait for something interesting to happen in front of the camera. Don't go looking for something crazy to be happening and then hope that you can catch it. Find a great photo and then wait for something interesting to happen within that spot right here. You ever have one of those moments where like you look at something and you realize, I like this, but why do I like this? You're not entirely sure. And for this, this was not that reason at all. I knew exactly why I liked this photo. This guy right here, first of all, looking super like beach mode ready. He's got the shorts, he's got the, the button up shirt, and he just looks like a, he looks like the guy, uh, what's, uh, the the most interesting man in the world, right? With the with the beard and the hair slicked back and the you know the cool glasses, and then here he is with two of just like the wimpiest looking dogs I've ever seen. It's so interesting to see such a big man with like such small dogs, and I think that, that looks interesting because I know personally. Our family, they wanted to get cats, and I'm like, we're not getting cats. And then we got cats, and I was the one who, like, loved these cats. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, I know where he's at. Maybe he didn't want the dogs, and then they got the dogs, and guess what? He's the one who now loves these dogs. I love that interesting mix a little bit. And on top of the composition of the three buildings, we got, you know, tall or I guess large, medium, and small as far as uh, rooftops go. And I like that because it gives us a great view of the sky and then uh, just makes the composition even stronger here.
thing I realized uh, was that I wasn't really getting a ton of um, photos of palm trees or sand or water, obviously, because I wasn't shooting at the beach. The place is called Seaside. You want to get the feeling that it's by the sea. What I really wanted was something a little bit more unique, and I thought, perfect time of the day, right? It was about noon, um, and then the shadows were coming straight down, and it made these really cool shadow patterns on the ground, but I had to find a place to be able to get high enough to capture the uh, the shadow of the palm trees right here. So luckily I found a little school area and there was some um, uh, steps leading up, so I just climbed up those steps. And when I saw that shadow of the tree, I thought, oh, this is, this is the perfect one. This is the best looking one. And luckily right in front of it are just two beautiful beachy Adirondack chairs. And that is the perfect situation where you look for a photo and you know, you're going for beach, uh, that beachy feeling and you get it with, I think with just the shadow right here. Like if this was the shot right here, I think that it would probably still accomplish what it was that I was looking for, but then being open to be able to see what else is around it and how you can incorporate that into your shot being these Adirondack chairs, you know, you can just imagine you sitting on a porch or, you know, at the beach looking out at the water um, in those chairs right there. So combined, it just made for a more powerful photo. I have to say this is probably the hardest Fuji photo walk that I've had to do. If you've seen any of the other Fuji photo walks, I do it with my X100V with a 23mm lens built in and I just know that camera and that lens like the back of my hand so it almost feels like the X100V is an extension of how I see um, already. So to switch things up not only with just a new camera where you kind of have to figure out what buttons and the layout but also with an entirely different lens it, it it just forces you to think a little bit differently forcing myself to kind of break the pattern of what i'm used to i think was really helpful for me here so while i didn't get the photos that i was hoping for and while overall this wasn't my best fuji photo walk i value the time that i spent doing this because i know that further on it's going to uh, help me become a better photographer. And I definitely think that I got some good photos here, ones that I would not have been able to get with the uh, X100V or a 23 millimeter lens. And for that, I'm grateful because at the end of it, I was getting used to the, uh, to the new lens and the new camera that it was starting to feel more uh, organic to me and being able to capture the photos that I was seeing in my head. Uh, my eye was, was, was seeing the world around me a little bit differently. I was looking, you know, a little bit further ahead of me than I, than I normally would have uh, with the 23 millimeter lens. I, I equate it to like going in for a workout, but it was just like an all right workout, right? You wanted to get, you wanted to get in the gym and you wanted to give yourself a real hard workout, but you got there and maybe the, the machine that you wanted to use was out of order or it was really busy. And therefore, when you leave, you still feel good because you got in a pretty good workout, but it wasn't the strongest workout that, um, uh, that you knew that you wanted to have. So at the end of the day, you still worked on your fitness, you still did the reps, you still uh, did work. It wasn't optimal, but that's still better than not going to the gym. And shooting is exactly the same. So like while I didn't get to get out and capture the photos that I knew that I wanted to in my head and it didn't flow the way that I expected it to, still getting out and challenging myself uh, was good enough to where I know that that's gonna help me in my skills. And I know that it's better than just sitting at home watching a YouTube video of somebody else getting out to shoot.